Why did France break ranks with all of its European neighbors uh, who have banned these rallies or canceled uh, or planned rallies? Uh, look, France has been very clear in officially the reasons why. It basically said that um, it, a state of law, the freedom of assembly, unless it sees any threat to public order from these rallies, and it said it does not at this point see any such threat, uh, there is no reason that they should be banned. It doesn't mean that France is saying that it necessarily agrees with the views of, of Turkey's President Erdogan. It doesn't necessarily say that they embrace it. Uh, in fact, in many cases, they think it's a provocation. But they don't think that that alone should justify banning, an outright ban on the rallies, which is why they broke ranks. And I said, that is the official position, right? You know, the freedom of assembly, uh, you know, the state of law here, no threat to public order. And also, the foreign minister added, he didn't actually see a specific threat to uh, any interference in French politics, something else perhaps, which has been a fear not explicitly cited in the banning of rallies in both Germany and, and the Netherlands. Um, unofficially, however, there has been um, other reasons, perhaps. I mean, the, the Turkish diaspora here is large in France. Um, it's perhaps 650 to 700,000 uh, Turks. Relative to the population, though, it's not nearly as big as the Turkish diaspora in either the Netherlands and Germany. In both of those communities, it's not just that there are many Turks living abroad in both Netherlands and, Tur and Germany who are seen as a potent constituency for air Erdogan as he campaigns for his referendum. They also tend to be very pro Erdogan in the legislative elections. He got a lot of his vote from the Turks in those countries, perhaps even more at times than at home in Turkey. Um, so perhaps a less potent uh, threat, perhaps seen politically from the establishment to French politics from the Turkish community here. Unofficially, there have been pro, uh, some parties protesting. The two right wing candidates in the French election, both Francois Fillon uh, and the far right candidate, Marine Le Pen, uh, both thinks think that the government acted uh, irresponsibly and, and un unrightly, that they should have actually banned these rallies. So it has not been across the board a uniform consent with the government's decision to let the rallies go ahead here in France. Doug, what's in this Turkish referendum that's coming up next month that, that caused tensions to escalate so much? Yeah, what is it about this? Uh, Europe sees uh, what Erdogan is trying to do with this referendum, and it's a constitutional reform he's proposing. It's really unlike anything we've seen in Turkey since uh, the founding of the modern Turkey. Republic under Ataturk in 1923. It's, uh, they see it as an executive presidential power grab. Essentially, this reform would abolish, would wipe out the prime minister's post. There's right now a parliamentary system led by a prime minister in Turkey. This would basically replace that, supplant it with a U.S.-style presidential executive. And that president would be quite powerful, able to appoint vice presidents, able to name and fire uh, ministers under him. Um, and also, more importantly, perhaps, uh, could perhaps be in power, perhaps Erdogan, until 2029. How would that work? Because next presidential election set for November 2019. If this were to pass, you'd have basically that mandate clock, the presidential term clock, reset to zero. Two five-year terms would be possible again. So you would have almost a Putin-style possibility of, of, if not life in power, at least a long time, a decade more in power. And I'll add to that, it's not just appointing ministers. It's not just he'd be in, in office potentially another decade. He'd also be able to appoint the members of the very powerful, the super Supreme Board of Judges and Prosecutors, also known as the High Council of Judges and Prosecutors. That's a judiciary. Coming in a context where we've seen quite a crackdown in the wake of July's coup, it does worry a lot of Europeans how Erdogan would use these enhanced presidential executive powers. Doug, thank you. France 24's Doug Herbert.